If you have a true scary story you want to see on the channel, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the new and improved big button to send it my way. It's actually a button now. I wanted to share something that happened to me just last year. 2023 was a very difficult year for me. My father had died from lung cancer and my mom and I had never really been close. So when I was distraught and looking for comfort, she wasn't there. They got divorced when I was a teenager and since then, when it came to my father, she was indifferent and dismissive. I was in a pretty serious relationship, but right before my father passed, my girlfriend left me, due to me, apparently, being too emotional and not caring enough about her. I had actually just financed an engagement ring and was planning on proposing. Shortly after she left, I learned that she was seeing my so-called friend, and the math didn't add up between us breaking up and her getting with him which was pretty heartbreaking. So within six months, I lost my dad, my eight-year relationship with my girlfriend, my friend, and emotionally, my mom. Needless to say, I was in a pretty dark place. One night, I was having trouble sleeping and contemplating the future of my life. I needed to get out of my little apartment and clear my head, so around midnight... I decided to just drive around. Sometimes a quiet drive on an empty road late at night can be pretty therapeutic. At the time, I just drove where I wanted. I didn't really have a destination in mind. I didn't use GPS. I just drove and turned where I was drawn to turn. I didn't even care if I was back the next day for work, or if I came home at all at that point. I'd been driving for a few hours at this point, but I wasn't quite ready to go home yet. However, I was going to need to refuel. I finally pulled off the highway when I saw the next exit for gas. When I rolled into the gas station, it was honestly pretty unremarkable. It wasn't the big ones that I was used to, like Casey's or Quick Trip, I'm from the Midwest, so I don't remember the name of it. There were two pumps, and it looked pretty ancient. The screen was digital, and based on the looks of the place, I'm sure that was fairly new for them. Another thing that made it seem new was that it couldn't even take cards at the pump. You had to go inside. So I made my way into the store to pay. Next to the store, there was a woman sitting on the concrete, in front of the ice box. She looked pretty normal, in the sense that she was wearing shorts, a tank top, and flip-flops. She had shoulder-length, dark, curly hair, and appeared to be playing some game on her phone with a severely cracked screen. She looked up at me, and smiled, and I just nodded back to her and went inside. I bought a candy bar and twenty bucks worth of gas, and the attendant bid me a good night. As I was walking back to my car, Someone called out to me, just saying, Excuse me, sir? I was the only one around, so I assumed it was towards me. I turned around to see the same woman as earlier walking up to me. Seeing her walking closer to me, I could tell that she looked a little rough. Her legs and feet were really dirty. The shirt was pretty faded and looked almost too big on her. And she honestly just looked tired. And... To be honest, I sympathized with her. Maybe that was my fault. She asked me if I had a cigarette she could have, and I declined. I didn't smoke, so I just apologized. I got to my car, took the cap off my tank, and she seemed to just be pacing in the parking lot, looking around. I felt bad, so I pulled out a few bills that I had and waved over to her. I asked if she might be able to buy a pack with it. She smiled and thanked me a dozen times before running into the gas station. I began filling up when she came back outside drinking a soda. 
I made eye contact with her, and she walked over to the pump I was at. She held up the bottle and said something about it being cheaper and better for her than cigarettes anyways. I laughed and agreed with her, and she again thanked me, holding out her hand and telling me her name. I had no reason to lie, so I did the same. We had a very short conversation while I was refueling. Where are you from? It's quite hot out right now. Shared some grievances about hating the heat. But when I was finished was when things took a hard turn. I shut the door to my tank and nodded to her to signal that I was leaving when she stopped me. She put her hand on my chest and she asked me if I would take her home with me. I stepped back, again, laughing. Sometimes I often do that in awkward situations. Her smile faltered a bit, and she said that she was being serious. I then politely declined, saying that I wasn't interested in that, and her smile completely vanished. She threw her arms down to her side, and much like a child throwing a tantrum, she started screaming. She was calling me names. She said I was just like all the others. I was taken aback by this outburst and slowly backed away from her. I was walking to my door so I could just get out of there, but she seemed to notice that too. This lady jumped on the hood of my car, crawling across it to the driver's door and stood in front of it screaming. I was trying to calm her down and reason with her as stupid as that was. Why did I need to explain to a stranger why I didn't want them to come home with me? But no amount of reasoning seemed to be working, as she pulled out a knife. It looked like just a plain old kitchen steak knife. I couldn't even begin to figure out where she was concealing it. She held it up, ready to strike me, and I took off towards the building. I didn't even notice the attendant was standing outside watching us. We made eye contact, and before I could say anything other than, I I just... He motioned for me to step aside, and he made his way towards the woman who was now kicking and slicing my poor car with this knife. I watched as they yelled at each other, and she charged at him, but he smoothly dodged her, grabbed her hand that was wielding the knife, causing her to drop it. He then wrestled her to the ground, where he held her there. He hollered for me to grab something in the store, which turned out to be a package of zip ties, and he bound her wrist behind her, and brought her over to sit by the pump, where she continued to kick at it, with blood running down her leg. I'm guessing that that was from wherever she was keeping that knife. He came over and asked if I was alright, and I told him that I was. He then explained to me that she was a regular around there, as in she regularly loitered, mooching off of people, but she rarely went berserk like that, joking that I must have done something to piss her off. I explained what happened while he waited for the police to show up. The man told me he was a retired police officer, so he knew how to handle the situation, not to mention her normal tactics. When the police arrived... They quickly got her up and started talking to her, calling her by name. So, they were obviously familiar with her too. I had to give a statement, because I was still paying for my car, so I had to report this all to my insurance, unfortunately. Before she was put in the cop car, she looked over at me, and smiled like I had just given her the money for the soda. The man apologized for the scene that she had caused, and afterwards... I was back on the road, ready to go home. The whole event from the time I pulled into that gas station to leaving only lasted a few hours, but by the time I got home, I was beyond ready to crash. I left my apartment in hopes to clear my head, and I guess, in a way, it kind of worked. I was going through a lot, and I thought that I was helping another person by giving her some cash, just trying to be friendly but it all backfired. If I hadn't reacted fast enough, she could have stabbed me in my shoulder, or worse. Hell, had I decided to take her home, what if I said something there that upset her? Or while we were in the car? Maybe that was her plan from the beginning, but who knows. 
I'd like to think that she was just having a really bad day, but the fact that she had that knife did not leave me with any good feelings about her. Ultimately, I was just glad that everyone came out of this situation mostly unscathed. I am in a better place now, for the most part, but more importantly, I hope that she is also in a better state of mind, too. Hi, Raven. This story could fall under the vacation or late night scary stories. It's both. In the early 1990s, my family went on a summer vacation. We had a nice time and were on our way back in the car that we had rented. It was around 11 p.m. We all needed the bathroom and a snack break and a good old-fashioned rest stop. We were just over the state line between two southern states. We came to a rest stop area very quickly, and we pulled in. There were a few cars there and some tractor trailers off to the side for the night. My family got out of the car and walked toward the building. As we approached, I saw three people in an apparent heated discussion on the sidewalk. As we got closer, I saw that it was a man and a woman talking to a third person. We couldn't see who the third person was because they were mostly blocked from view by the man and the woman. Suddenly, the man turned away from the third person, and a nearby light in the parking lot illuminated his face. He wore an expression of pure terror. I realized then that something was horribly wrong. The man quickly grabbed the woman by her arm and pulled her toward their car. As they moved away from the third person, I saw the reason for their terror. The third person was a man holding a 45 caliber pistol on them. Oddly, he was wearing sunglasses at 11 o'clock at night. I thought that he was going to shoot the man and the woman, but once they had moved, he saw us. They made it to their car and drove out of there fast. The rest of my family saw all this at the same time that I did. My dad immediately urged us to run. We scattered in different directions, trampling the grass that had big signs saying not to walk on it. I made it to the building alone. I wasn't sure where everyone else had gone, but I didn't see the creep with the gun anymore. I went down the east side of the building. It was dim, and I felt that it was my best chance to hide. I then came upon a bathroom, but decided not to trap myself in a place like that. I kept going. Wondering what the man had planned to do to us. Was he going to kill us? If he did, he would probably leave our bodies in the woods. Animals would scatter our bones and no one would ever know what happened to us. We'd be one of those unsolved cases. How did a whole family disappear at the same time? The idea made me very angry, and I was determined to get us out of there alive so I formulated a plan. My dad had brought his rifle with him, and since we were staying in a rural area during our vacation, he would practice with it. The rifle was in the car. My dad had the keys. The only thing that I could do was try to get back to the car and kick a window in. I continued down the side of the building, and as I reached the corner, I crouched down low to peek around it. The creep was not there. No one was there. I made my way along the back of the building and crouched again at the next corner. Again, no creep, thank goodness. I followed along the west side of the building, which would take me back to the front. At the front corner, I carefully peeked around to see who was in the parking lot. There was no one. I listened. There were no sounds of movement, so I dashed for the nearest vehicle and ducked down behind it. I didn't hear anyone. I looked underneath it for feet, but no one was to be found. So I carefully wound my way towards our parking space, keeping low behind the cars and watching for feet. I was gauging how hard I would have to kick the window in to be able to break it. At last, I reached our vehicle. At the same moment, so did my dad. He quickly unlocked it and seconds later the rest of our family came running to the car. 
we drove out of there as fast as possible. The creep had reached the front of the building as we were exiting the parking lot. I didn't know who he had been tailing or where he had been, and I felt numb as we drove away into the night, but also thankful to have gotten out of there safely. So, I just got home from the police station due to a related event that happened two months ago. Now that there was a slight update on the situation, I wanted to share this here. I'm an avid walker, and I love walking at night the most. I love the quiet and stillness of the world at night. There are no cars driving around, no honking, not even dogs barking. Depending on my mood, it's just the slight patting of my feet and the clicking of my dog Colonel's feet, or maybe some music in my ears. It was always so therapeutic to me, so per my norm on this night, I put on my workout clothes, pulled my hair up, and got Colonel on his leash and headed out the door. My walk was typically around the block, and if we were feeling up to it, we may cut through part of the walking trail across the street. That night, I was tired, but I still needed to walk, so I was just planning on walking around the neighborhood. As we walked, I became lost in thought, enjoying the peace and solitude of the night, as well as thinking of my plans for the following day. Over the hill in front of me, I saw the headlight of an oncoming vehicle that seemed to slow down as it passed me. It continued on, so I thought nothing else of it at the time. Shortly after, I heard the low whirring sound of a motor from behind me. A car was now coming from the opposite direction. I watched the headlights grow wider as it got closer to me, and in my peripheral vision, I saw the car slow to a halt until it was matching my walking speed. I, of course, looked over as they rolled down the window. I immediately noticed that there was only the driver in the vehicle. Colonel was immediately doing his protective growl, but it was quiet. He knew he wasn't supposed to do it, as he typically did it to all strangers at first, but I also know that it's something to pay attention to. Dogs aren't typically wrong when it comes to knowing a person, right? He greeted me with a smile and asked me for directions to the closest gas station. I thought it was kind of odd, because if you were from the area you knew of the two closest ones. But if you weren't from around the neighborhood, you may not know about the one that was hidden away. But if that's the case, why were you in this area in the first place? The road that I was walking was all residential. It wasn't a main road that had a lot of businesses on it. You either lived here or knew someone that did. Keeping this in mind, I just told him the direction of the larger, more known gas station in the area. He thanked me, and then, to my surprise, he asked me if I needed a ride. I thought this was weird. I was clearly walking by choice. I had active wear on and had my dog. But I let it go, letting out a slight laugh and politely declining, saying that I was enjoying my walk. He nodded, thanking me again, and drove off. I watched as he drove past me, and instead of turning left, like I had explained, he turned right. This immediately put me off of this whole situation. Did he just stop to talk to me? Did he just want to offer the ride to get me in his car? Whatever the case was, I didn't want to go towards the car, so I turned around. I had only gotten halfway through my walk when I saw the car, so turning back... I just had to take a left and then down the end of that road and across the street. I picked up my pace, and Colonel quickly picked up my plans as well. He moved to my right, keeping himself between me and the road. After turning left, I was feeling more at ease, knowing that I was almost home. But then I saw a tree being illuminated by something more than just a streetlight. It was headlights. Slowly, I watched a car turn right onto the street that I was on. Colonel was immediately on guard again, watching the car as it slowly approached us and, once again, came to a stop. 
It was the same car, only this time the passenger door opened and a man got out. Colonel lost it. He started barking and snarling like crazy, which terrified me even more. I started backing up, but Colonel stayed in place barking. I tried pulling on him, but he wouldn't move. I wasn't about to leave my faithful dog, either. The man continued to approach me, but as soon as he got by Colonel, he tried to go for a kick, but Colonel was faster, and immediately latched onto his leg. I was freaking out, not wanting him to get hurt, but I didn't know what to do. The guy was screaming and flailing and demanding that I get the dog off of him, but I was frozen. Finally, I called for Colonel and he let go, but continued barking and jumping at the guy. He ran back and jumped back into the car, and then they sped off. I stood there for several seconds, taking in everything that had just happened. When I finally came to, Colonel was at my side whimpering. I was worried he had been hurt, so I looked him over right there, but there wasn't a scratch on him. I hugged him as I couldn't have been more thankful for him in that moment, and we ran back home. I was standing in front of my neighbor's house and looked around one last time. I didn't want to go in my house in the case that they came back, and they would then see where I lived. When I saw the roads dark and empty, I quickly ran inside my home, locking the doors. I ran to grab my phone, feeling like an idiot for not taking it with me for once. I didn't feel like listening to the music, and since that's all I used my phone for while I walked, I had decided to leave it at home that night. I called the police, and they said that they would send someone out. Shortly after, two cops arrived and took my statement, and I gave them as much information as I could remember. Unfortunately, I could tell the car was dark, either gray, maybe black, and other dark metallic colors, but I didn't get the make and model. I also gave a description of the guys in it, but that's about all I could do. They said they would contact me if anything came up. They also did a quick sweep of the area, but didn't find anyone, unfortunately. This was a terrifying situation for me, and I fear what could have happened to me if I didn't have Colonel with me. However, I don't like to live in fear. I chose to learn from this experience. I got a wrist strap to carry my phone with me, always, and I also have a small can of mace that fits on my keychain. But, as I mentioned in the beginning, I had recently gone to the police station. Why? That's because I got a call from one of the officers that was there that night, asking me to come in and look at some pictures. They had received a report of a similar incident that happened nearby at a local bar. A woman was leaving, walking home, when she was stopped by a car asking if she needed a ride. She said that she was going to take it until she approached and saw a man in the back seat. When she saw this, she declined, but the guy in the back got out trying to pull her in. Thankfully, she had screamed enough to catch the attention of people nearby, and they took off. Her description of the vehicle and the two men matched mine, and being close to the area, they suspected that it was the same guys. But this time... One of the witnesses caught the type of vehicle, and when they showed me pictures of different ones, I was able to confirm that it was the same kind. So, now, there are at least two reports of these men trying to snatch women, and while I'm happy to hear that they have more information and are taking this seriously, I'm now worried all over again. I worry if they'll continue to try. I worry if they have been successful and no one knows. However, I will be amping up my safety even more now. If they come back, I will be prepared. Hopefully, they just get caught before it comes to that. I've never really had many encounters with the paranormal, besides seeing a shadow figure occasionally while growing up, and still do, and constantly having lucid, 
ish dreams of my running through a forest. Same thing every time, but I don't know if that is paranormal. Anyway, this happened on August 23rd. It was around 10 p.m., and I was home alone. My dad was driving back from dropping my older brother back off at college, which was about an hour away. I was sitting on my couch, the recliner up, and had my blanket over me because it was cold. My dog is a chihuahua and a black Labrador mix. Her name is Lulu. Lulu was under my blanket and laying between my legs like she normally does when I'm sitting in the living room. I was watching Criminal Minds, the episode 7 seconds, and was at the part where Reed and Morgan were searching the girl's family's house. Lulu has separation anxiety, and if I leave a room, she has to follow. She doesn't like me going to the bathroom without her, and sometimes I'll actually shut my room door when she's still in there so she'll scratch and whine at the door. Which is fine, but on this particular night, reminder, she's practically in my lap. It's dark in the house because I like watching the TV in the dark, and my room door is closed. It's at the end of the hallway, and I suddenly heard what sounded like Lulu whining and scratching at my door. It sounded just like her. The way her nails would sound on my door. The way the door would shake and even the high-pitched cues like she's being murdered. And for a split second, I thought it was her. But then Lulu shot up from her spot on the couch and gets out of the blanket. She climbed on to me a little and just started growling, and I got freaked out because the sound from my door was still happening. I moved my dog off of me and get up. The sound stops when I stand at the end of the hallway, but I'm still freaked out and turn the hallway light on. I grab the pocket knife on the table and open my door and there's nothing there. There's no marks on the door, nothing. So I think I'm going crazy, but my dog, who followed me, is still growling and on edge. So I just close my room door and go back to watching Criminal Minds. My family doesn't believe me, and I still have no idea what that was. I had come home late from my sister's house, which is not far from my own. We had opened our business that year, and sometimes we found that we were working out details for hours as it got later and later. I made it inside my house and closed and locked the door as usual, and hung up my heavy coat. I called my sister briefly and said that I was home, that all was well, and she hung up. I had a quick bath and couldn't wait to hit my bed. I laid there for only 15 minutes when my sister reminded me of the presidential debates. They were on now. I decided that I did want to see it, so I hauled myself out of bed and my miniature white poodle, Minnie, rest in peace, and I sat in a recliner and she was right on my lap, and I had the debates on medium settings, and she went fast asleep. I started getting into the jibes and sarcasm, the poking and prodding and manipulation and wordplay jousting. Suddenly, my little dog awoke, stood up and growled and let out a ferocious bark, and a loud shot rang out. It sounded like it was inside my house. I have really nice replacement windows in my house that make it super quiet. Generally, I hear nothing outside, but it was so loud that my ears rang. I recalled that my windows are triple pane and argon gas filled, which ensures the quiet and prevents temperature changes. Keeping warm air inside in the winter and cool air inside in the summer. So they save you money with their good thermal insulation. If you were to have someone break, or yes, cut that window, then the gas pops loudly, causing an unbelievable sound that would have set off my glass break slash percussion sensor. But... Though I had my security system on, it didn't go off. My dog awoke and stood and growled and barked and I'd said, A bad dream? And then I heard that loud shot. What the hell? 
The next day, I inspected all of my windows and found nothing. The bricks of my house, everywhere that I felt the sound emanated from, and it was definitely behind my head from the living room window at the front of the house. To this day, I've never found a slug or break in the window, but I am glad that I had my poodle witness. So That My Friends was a collection of some late night horror stories, scary stories that happen, well, well after bedtime. Bedtime being 9.30. Be in bed by 9.30, and they're just, yeah, just be in bed by 9.30, okay? Sheesh. Don't, like, be rude. Just go to bed. No. Um, my bedtime is... I'm old. Uh, I like to go to bed at 9. Okay, I think I've said this before to y'all, but... I'm one of those weirdos that likes to go to bed at, like, 9 p.m., and I'll lay there in bed and I'll read on my Kindle for about half an hour to an hour. And then I go to sleep and I typically fall asleep pretty quickly. I'm the kind of person where like if I'm tired, I can just pff, head at the pillow. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm one of those weirdos. But anyways, so if I'm like super tired, because I'll read half an hour to an hour. And then I fall asleep and I like to wake up at five in the morning. And I have to do the math. Uh, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. is seven hours. Um, I'm going to be honest, I typically wake up closer to 5.30 because that's just when I wake up. I'm a really bad snoozer nowadays, though. Like, I will tell my alarm to snooze. My alarm is my stupid Alexa. But anyways, I tell it to snooze, like, all the time. And I don't like to do that, but it is what it is. Um, anyways, my point is, I like to go to bed early. I'm, I'm an old person that likes to go to bed early and wake up early. Like, it's like 5 to 5.30 a.m., and that's when I like to start my day. You know what? Thinking about it, it's kind of funny. I start my day around 12 hours before my videos go live. That's, uh... No wonder I chose 5.30 as my video time. Hmm. It was mentally imprinted on my brain. Interesting. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, late night stories. Stories that happen way after bedtime. Sorry, I, I just kind of, like, went on a weird tangent there. Uh, scary stories at night. Good stories. Always creepy. Always terrifying. And these were no exception to that. These were certainly the rule. That is... That is for sure. Hopefully, you all enjoyed this collection of stories. If you did, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button. Sorry, I'm, I'm ordering them really quick on my list here. Three, four, and five. Anyways, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed them. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like button. It should flash in front of you if you're on PC. Maybe mobile, I don't know. But if I say hit the like button, it it, it tends to like light up. It's kind of cool. You can also, and this one will light up too if you're not already done, if, it's not, if you're not already subbed. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel, as that helps the channel grow tremendously. You can also go down below the video and leave me a nice comment, or a rude comment, your decision, I don't care. You can leave me rude comments and attack me all you like. Just know if you leave me a rude comment that has no merit or no standing, I will make fun of you to patients and other narrators. Yes, that's a thing we do. Not really. It's sometimes, I mean, okay, so there's like some trolls that like to comment on everybody's videos and we do make fun of them because it's hilarious that they spend all their time negatively commenting on narrators' videos. Like, it's probably another narrator that's just jealous really, but whoever, whoever whatever. I probably won't make fun of you, but I will make a comment about you to patients, and we will chuckle about it, if you're rude. If you're nice, I'll probably leave you a nice heart on your comment. Uh, I'll heart the comment, I'll like the comment, and probably respond. I like to respond to comments, I try to respond to as many as I can. Um, if you like the channel and like the content, you can also join the memberships, or go to the Patreon. To get early access to content like this, never expected, but always appreciated. You can also uh, do a super thanks, just a tip to the channel. Again, never expected, always appreciated, and all that. Yeah. Um, all that said, friends, I hope you're having a beautiful weekend. Hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important. You are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Please. They shouldn't, because you are 
You are important. Anyways, until I see you again, my friends, much love, and of course, sleep well.